Hello lovelies. Here I am at Valley Medical Center for another pickup of my scan results, my CTMR, my chest. Um, I've really put it in the back of my mind, but now that I'm here, I'm really nervous and my tummy hurts because I don't know if I'm gonna read it now or later. And I always get all up in knots because it's like, you know, these are the moments that can change everything. And I only want the best news, of course, because I wanna keep going down this really positive mindset. And I have a visit with my oncologist today, my new one. And I unfortunately can't avoid um, thinking about all of this. I've gotta face it today. And it's always hard to circle back when you've had a little break. You kinda of go back to your normal self and living. And and that's this. I've had a pretty easy week of chemo, except for last night, I found myself very dehydrated and almost went to the ER. But I was able to work it, work it through at home. So I learned some lessons about taking care of myself this week. Um, but this week of chemo was, I mean, I, I helped move a friend. So my, um, well, myself to my boyfriend, uh, my partner's place. So I was very active and I didn't um, have any down days. So, okay, anyways, I'm gonna go in and get it now because I've got a lot of stuff to do today. So anyways, all right. Okay. Got them. I'm going to drive to Seattle and open them up with my boyfriend um, while sitting on his beautiful deck looking at the city of Seattle. So a peaceful um, place to um, read these. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm going now. All right. Okay, so I am on my way to my oncologist and I have read the MRI, CT, MR, which is always so scary. And it's pretty much what I visualize, which is good. Um, I imagine that these would be a, a lot more- Keep effective. right, then turn left onto South Dearborn Street. Um, and it's looking like it really is in that um, pectoral muscle, which is really uh, pointing at a local recurrence, nothing- Turn left onto South Dearborn Street. I'm gonna, yeah, they can, I saw it on my last video. Ah. I, I think I know where Sorry, my maps are going off, so I stopped. So, okay, so the findings, basically, um, the uh, an upper anterior aspect of the reconstructed left breast. Um, there are there is a 1.6 times 0 0.8 times 1.0 centimeter nodular area of enhancement. This is suboptimally seen, however, overall appears slightly decreased in size. Given its location, this would likely be seen on targeted ultrasound, better evaluated on dedicated breast MRI. So it looks like I have a follow-up to look at that. It's looking like um, that that is just a, a local in the muscle and definitely shrunk because I think my last test result had it at over maybe a two centimeter. Um, the meta metastinal area um, is really, really great news. Um, the study suboptimally evaluates the metas metastinum. Um, previously described subcarnal lymph node measures 0.6 centimeters short access, decreased in size. And I lost my spot. Oh, previously described presumed lymph node near the ad as as azijos, I don't know how to say that, vessel in the T5, T6 level is not confidently seen. It is uncertain whether these changes are due to findings decreasing in size or poor signal to nose ratio. Well, obviously the chemo is working to decrease those. And the previously described soft tissue prominence anterior mediastinum. I'm sorry, I'm never. I get it. I'm not. I don't say that right. Um, as de, as has decreased and now decreased and appears more fatty. This may have represented transient increased size of thymic tissue which has since resolved, resolved. No discrete anterior metastinal mass is seen. That is the most amazing thing I've heard. So this is looking like either, maybe it was such an early, early spread, we caught it and it's like almost gone or resolved, but even more so it's looking like it's just a fatty tissue that might just be thymic stuff from maybe like chemo, um, which is amazing. No other metastinal um, things are found and uh, I just have, I got to follow up with a, with an ultrasound. I'm a minute away from my oncologist. We'll see what he says about it. And I'm feeling very, very happy right now. So we know that, I mean, we don't know which chemo is working, possibly both, but now we have a good idea of how much, you know, two 
two of the um, previous protocol, the epirubicin, doxy, um, um, epirubicin cytoxin 5-FU versus the taxel carboplatin. So we're going to look at this measurement as we go forward with treatment and then we can see if it's continuing down this path of decreasing and gone. And then we'll see what's next. So um, yeah, we'll know if this therapy, if everything doesn't go away, like if it, or if it just slowly starts decreasing in size, then maybe that means this protocol isn't as effective and that would suck because it's a lot easier than the last one. So I'll give you an update based on what my oncologist says, but this is wonderful news and I'm very, very happy right now. You happy? Mm. <laughs> very happy. I'm happy about that. Um, so far the Taxol has been easier than the other regimen. It usually is? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, that's, I guess, it. That's, yeah. Okay. So, I don't have any any uh, scheduled chemos here yet, so I need to figure out getting on the mm -hmm. the schedule. Um, mm -hmm. And then, oh, you did you got my um, um, the what is it? The garden or the mutation? Yeah. 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 So there, yeah, there's different mutations there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch there. Um, it showed like five. Or yeah. Something. So, um, what should happen is those mutations should should uh, should go away, hopefully over time with treatment. That's mm -hmm. what the aim is. Mm -hmm. it, it does give a little indication about certain drugs that may work for your cancer, mm -hmm. but uh, that's for the future. Um, uh, it doesn't tell you specific chemotherapies that mm -hmm. will work for it, mm -hmm. but the hope is that the chemotherapies that we're using will shrink it and then we will do some other uh, medications. One of the is called uh, a mutation, suggests that you would benefit from what you call the CDK4 uh, slash 6 uh, inhibitors. Uh, those are things like tablocycline. There's something else called a demo cycle in. Those are will uh, work on a, a, a growth mm -hmm. cycle of your cancer. So those uh, those can be for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like after chemo. After chemo or maintenance or, 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 or mm -hmm. alternating with chemo. So what oh, we've awesome. done. So right now, I think you know people. I think we talked about it last time. Is that you would be considered basically would be stage four disease, um, and generally that's not considered curable. But we're trying to change all that mm -hmm. and saying that we can potentially cure someone in your stage, but you have to get the right treatments, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, the uh, the treatment that you had was okay. But one is that you would get resistance at some point, and the question is when. Mm -hmm as well as the problem is that you can't keep on using it, you're gonna accumulate heart, you're gonna get accumulate damage to your heart. I don't know why, but th th that's one issue. But two mm -hmm. is that you need to change it or you're gonna, you're gonna develop heart problems. Mm -hmm. If not now, later on. Yeah, I'm um, sorry about that. The, the heart issues is, uh, I mean, uh, it has to be said that it's my opinion, mm -hmm. but if you look it up, you'll, you should find out that it's true. Mm -hmm. That's the standard sort of way people say that you haven't had enough to cause heart problem. That is a wrong answer to to th this treatment. Mm -hmm. What the the issue is is that it's not that you haven't had enough to cause heart heart damage or because that's not true. We know that with the treatment, you get heart damage. Mm -hmm. It's how much you get mm -hmm. to increase your chance so you at, are at high, higher risk of getting heart damage. Mm -hmm. In other words, we know that if you look up all the literature yeah. about these drugs, they cause heart damage. I've read that, yes. So, as I try to explain, let's say you're 
you have a hundred heart cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. Each time you get a treatment, you destroy five. Okay, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And to see obvious heart damage, let's say you need to destroy half of them, fifty. So you may say, okay, I'm going to do it up till uh, I get to forty-five. Mm -hmm. And and your chances of heart damage to the point that you see heart failure is not that as high. They say a certain level they they've calculated you get like five percent. That's the the mm -hmm. like the average. Mm -hmm. But what is not yeah. true is that the, all the treatments you gotten before that yeah. does not damage your heart. It does damage your heart. Mm -hmm. It's just that it hasn't reached that number to uh, usually cause heart damage at that time. Yeah. But that's why we see this mm -hmm. later on. We see it 10 years later, 5 years, 10 years later, because let's say you damage 45 heart, fi heart fibers. You didn't reach the threshold of 50 where you would see um, uh, most of the heart damage. Makes sense. I get it. Yeah. But later yeah. on, you get older. Other things contribute. Other things contribute to you it. Get to that fifty. You yeah. get to that fifty, and you're put in you're the there. Fire. You're yeah. there. Yep. Got it. So the the damage is already damaged, and yeah, you just accumulating that damage over time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's what I try to let people know, mm -hmm. because we often see this 10, 20 years later, and especially with people who are young. You know, if you're thinking about the future, you have to take that into account. Yeah, yeah I've got three kids, so I plan on sticking around for a long okay. time. Yeah. And then I'm curious, after you get a chance to read the newest scan results, if there's a chance based on what they're saying here, it looks like maybe they're saying this is this is maybe inflammation, not spread. Okay, good. So I'm hoping that maybe I can get back to that stage three mm -hmm. <laughs> and hang on to that. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're still trying to get rid of it, whether whether it's stage three or stage four, right? It, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know you talked about some liquid biopsies. At what point mm -hmm. um, in uh, this process now coming here would you be looking at liquid biopsies? Well, we can do that at any time. We can okay. do it at the first treatment, just get uh, a liquid biopsy and how, see how it is. Uh, we may have even another uh, we're now considering even another test that may be even more interesting than liquid biopsy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called a signature uh, test. Uh, um, and uh, you can look it up. Signature is by the company called uh, Natura, N A T E R A. And what they're mm -hmm. doing is mm -hmm. interesting. They're taking a few person's tumor. Mm -hmm. Uh, and comparing it to their normal cells. Mm -hmm. So most of the everything is going to be similar, but there are a few differences between the tumor, the cancer, and your normal cells. And mm -hmm. that's what makes it a cancer, right? Right. So they can look at different pieces of the cancer that's different from the, from the cell. normal cells. Mm -hmm. And then through the, the blood draw, they can see if they can find these little uh, uh, bits in their blood, and they're reporting uh, that in in several types of cancers they're studying, it does seem to correlate with uh, with uh, uh, treatment um, of people getting rid of their cancer when they've eliminated those those uh, bits of DNA in their blood. And how do you eliminate the DNA? With treatment. With drugs. With Yes. Mm -hmm. What well, I mean, you could use whatever method you want to mm -hmm. use, right? Whether it's trying natural things mm -hmm. or chemotherapy or everything else. Mm -hmm. Right now, what I'm you know doing uh, is the chemotherapy and drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Now people. So it's the been, chemo that you're already using that's having that. Okay. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what we're gonna do because that's what we know or have shown works. Now the other things work. Mm -hmm. that's fine and we'll have a chance to evaluate them but you're gonna always well I'm gonna try to use the things I know already mm -hmm. work 
and we would try other things in the future, but you know, you know assuming you want the best chance yeah. of getting rid of their disease, mm -hmm. we'll have to use the things at this point that we know or have shown that mm -hmm. has worked before, right? Yeah. Yeah. And seemingly so far so good mm -hmm. as far as with the the two other two other protocols. So I've had four chemo's over the last four weeks and two of the new ones so mm -hmm. it's definitely looking promising mm -hmm. yeah so and i've been doing um i i'm icing my hands and feet okay Good. i'm doing that um mm -hmm. have you seen you uh on our exam we saw that you have a tumor mm -hmm. in your breast right here it's in the it, it talks about it more specifically this is a better scan than my than i when i got before mm -hmm. and it talks about being in the in the pectoral muscle mm -hmm. which is where it was before and it says it's in the exact same spot as a previous biopsy mm -hmm. so it, it literally came back in the exact same spot was probably some leftover in the muscle mm -hmm. and then my implant of course is under the muscle so it's um it's where they had biopsied it from the first recurrence it's in the same position can you see it feel it shrinking i feel it shrinking oh good see and it. it's noted that it's shrunk on the the test oh well, great yeah. yeah so yeah yeah good that's encouraging it is yep and I'm still doing my stuff. I'm doing my berberin. I'm doing my metformin. I got back on doxycycline. Um, and I started the COQ10. And what else am I doing? Um, oh, um, I, I brought melatonin back into my regimen daily, working mm -hmm. my way up, because I'm very sensitive to melatonin. It makes mm -hmm. me feel like, like a hangover the next day. So I'm still at the five and I'm, now I'm, I'm doing okay on that, so I'm going to get to 20. Okay. Um, what else am I MSM. doing? I'm doing the MSM powder. It makes me feel really good. My body, my joints, I have a, I feel a lot better. And the citric, citrus fruit pectin, I do that. And I go in my sauna a few times a week. I have our infrared at home. So I've been sweating and exercising and trying to do as much as I can really, as low glucose as possible, um, low glutamine, uh, eat pretty much one meal a day mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Trying to do all, all everything I can do to mm -hmm. block those pathways and starve it out in mm -hmm. addition to the chemo so you okay. can optimize it. Anything else I can be doing? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you do you do you do your tumor? Do you have tumor markers? CEA. CEA I haven't done the CEA. My my latest uh, twenty seven twenty nine came back eleven, and okay. that was um, okay. a month ago. Okay. Uh, but I haven't uh, had the CEA done in over a year. Was it ever elevated? Or I think fine? it was only. I think. Never really went. When I first, when I. My first one, I think it was a one, and then I think mm -hmm. it was a two or a three. Okay. So what's high? I don't know what's high on that high one. Why is uh, at least four, four, at least four I think one. my second one was a three. Yeah. So if they're not elevated, this means that your, your cancer is not making it, so it's not usually useful. Mm -hmm. So the things that we have is the, the garden that we have, and maybe this other test, the, the signature test that we okay. can consider, and then your scans, and then just you're being able to feel the tumor. To feel it, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you think the next best follow-up based on, I know you haven't read it yet, but is mm -hmm. would be an ultra, if recommending ultrasound and then a, maybe even a breast MRI. To for, Do you feel like you need to see more of it right now or based on what you have, you know like we're gonna do the same thing anyway? Will it help you at all to have any more scans? Um, and MRI might be useful. Let me see what they say, but if they saw it originally in the uh, pectoral muscle, mm -hmm. they, you want to definitely get it off there and see how well you, you get that. Um, mm -hmm. you, okay, and then if you get it off there, yeah, you, may need, uh, a, uh, you may need surgery, right? That's surgery. what my next question was going to be after all this, in my, based on would, would I be a candidate for surgery and what kind of surgery and how invasive would that be? Well, uh, yeah, if you're, if you can shrink it off, first of all, it's most important to shrink it off the, the muscle, muscle there. And then you shrink it off the muscle there, 
then you would uh, probably most likely need some surgery there to make sure it is cleared away from the cleared clear from that area. I mean that's what the last one was. What kind of surgery besides after a mastectomy can you do? Uh, you can go back in there to yeah I mean you may have to to take the implant out and then redo it basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would they just scrape the muscle, or would they have to? Do, would it be damaged? Like, would they cut it? Like, well, hopefully, it's all, well off the off the mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. Then, let's say, let's say it's it, let's say it's this big on the muscle. Mm -hmm. Then you shrink it to that small, and it's off the muscle, and you just have to take it out. There's just nothing else there. Right now, yeah. it's a one. It's one point one centimeter by zero point eight by. And it's so it's less. It's a centimeter and less. Right now. But there's there's the muscle and the implant, right? I mean, there, I mean, there, like what else the implant and the muscle. There's nothing else. Oh, there's nothing there. Um, no. There's no breast tissue. Uh, okay. Oh, there is no breast tissue there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that's gonna be. Because I've already had a full mastectomy. Unless there's more. I think they take. I had skin sparing, so I have my skin. I have my nipple and areola. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, okay. Let me think. What we could do about here. Okay, some people would recommend doing radiation there. I want to see, think about whether you can avoid doing something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, because I'm not a big fan of radiation, let's put this way. So let me think. Okay. I, what, I'm just curious, because we aren't either. <laughs> We're not a big fan of any of this. But, but I, was I was worried if it didn't do it last time, if that's why it well, came back. Yeah, what, what, what is your, why don't you like radiation? Just curious. Damage well, you, damage. Da you damage the area. You damage the normal. I mean, chemo is damaging. I mean, everything we're doing is damaging. It's like choose your evil, choose your poison. So but I'm the, just curious. The damage in radiation is usually permanent damage. Mm -hmm. So the chemo is is temporary damage, yeah. but usually not not to be permanent damage. I see. Except okay. certain things, like uh, that's the concern about the epirubicin. That's mm -hmm. Permanent damage to the mm -hmm. heart. Right. You you destroy the heart muscle, uh, or how many heart muscles depending on how much oh, radiation you have. Oh, would it be beneficial to get at this point any kind of like echo echocardiogram? Yeah. So the recommendation is it doesn't necessarily have to be now, but to follow it on a regular basis to get echocardiogram. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, to follow it on a regular basis. That's what I would do do to follow it. Yeah. Okay, it's been about years. Uh, it, it probably would be better to um, have the MRI. You see the details better. Okay. We're okay. do it. We do it. Um, you know, MRI, but but they originally saw it with the MRI, right? So just follow. Uh, um, they originally this one has never been a breast MRI. I I got a PET scan. I got a PET CT. Oh, and they saw it the PET PET mm -hmm, already. The PET, and then I did okay. a follow up, and then I did um, that test. This, the chest CT, and then I did four treatments, and then I did another chest CT. So, okay. Yeah, but um, no breast MRI. So we should do a breast MRI. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that. Is it okay if I we usually get Monday, so I'm kind of like missing chemo today. I like I've missed, I'm missing a week. Is that going to be a problem? Okay, well, just no, get, get on for next schedule. Monday and yeah. get back. Okay. Yeah. Unless you want to do it, the other possibility of doing it tomorrow. If you mm -hmm. get blood, do it tomorrow, and then then switching back to Monday next week. Mm -hmm. That then when you won't miss one. Mm -hmm. Get it out of the get it done. The best okay. way this treatment works is you, it is continuous. Stay on top. I don't want to miss it. Okay. Because last time, then the other times, I, there's a couple times I had to miss, and I just don't want to. I just want to be on it. So. Tomorrow, okay. assuming everything is okay, we can do the treatment. Okay. So blood draw today? Yeah, CPCCMP. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I'm assuming everything's okay, and you just go ahead, do the Schedule. treatment tomorrow, and then you just switch to Monday okay. for the following week. But I don't, okay. that, that's if you don't miss a week, it looks better that way. Then okay. I'm going to be here. Okay. Okay, deal. <laughs>